Hi, I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Howdy doody, puppy parents. What's up, y'all? I don't know about you, but I'm still kind of reeling after last week's Rainbow Bridge episode. It was lovely to hear all the wonderful stories about how people's furry companions really changed their life for the better. But it's a lot. It's a little little heavy. (laughs) Especially with all the other craziness happening around us. Yeah. So this week, we wanted to do something a bit more lighthearted. And we had so much fun doing the episode about the top 880 songs about Jack Russell Terriers. We thought we'd do something like that again. But this time, let's try the 90s and make it about movies. Awesome. So here it is, puppy parents. The top nine 90s movies inspired by Jack Russell Terriers, the game. Yep, we're making it a game and here's how it works. Each of us will read the brief summary of a 90s movie, then the other will first guess the name, and then second say how that movie was inspired by Jack Russell Terriers. (laughs) Okay. I'm sure they all were. I'm sure. (laughs) And this sounds exactly like the kind of silliness we need right now. Exactly. So are you ready to play the top nine 90s movies inspired by Jack Russell Terriers game? (laughs) (laughs) I'll do my best. Okay. So let's do this thing. Here's the summary of the number nine movie. An artificial young man who's left with scissors for hands because his maker died, lives a lonely orphan life until a quirky saleswoman adopts him, bringing him back to her even quirkier suburban life. That's a tough one. Scissors for hands, you say? (laughs) (laughs) I would guess maybe Edward Scissorhands. Ah, good guess. (laughs) (laughs) And it relates because naive people lovingly adopt a needy, good-hearted boy only to have their life torn to shreds. That sound about right? That's about right. (laughs) And I think those scissor hands might be equivalent to teeth. (laughs) (laughs) Those little baby scissor teeth. That's right. Okay, your turn. So read the movie summary and I'll explain why it's inspired by Jack Russell Terriers. Okay, so here it is. Number eight. Loosely based on the Shakespeare play Taming of the Shrew, already relevant, Mm -hmm. this movie tells the story of a hyper-intelligent, snarky teenager whose hardened heart is melted by an equally misunderstood hunk. That sounds like almost every Hallmark movie ever made. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But since it's from the 90s, I would guess 10 Things I Hate About You. Nice. My goodness, this has got to be inspired by Jack Russell's in so many ways. First of all, a hyper-intelligent, snarky teenager, (laughs) need I say more. But also, Jack Russell parenting really does feel like a lot of misunderstandings, (laughs) which happen in the movie. All day, every day. You must understand them by thinking they'll respond like a typical dog, and the JRTs misunderstand us by thinking they run everything. But I would also like to hone in on the taming of the shrew part. Mm -hmm. Most JRTs need a bit of taming, and they often do what you ask, kicking and screaming. (laughs) (laughs) I like the visuals. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so number seven. Here's the summary. A man discovers he's living in a make-believe world created for a reality TV show for which he is the star. That sounds like the Truman Show. It's a topsy-turvy thing getting a dog. We're living this life that resembles our old life, but I'm forever at the whim of an all-powerful outside force. That's what it feels like. Wow. (laughs) It's not that bad. 
be a little bit of a drama queen. Maybe. Oh, thanks. <laughs> maybe. Just maybe. I don't know. Okay. All right. So this one is a bit closer analogy for number okay. six. Okay. After a violent earthquake opens the ground in their backyard, two high schoolers find a caveman in a glacier, thaw him out, then struggle to show him how to live in a civilized society. <laughs> Oh, goodness. That has to be Encino Man. Starring the often underappreciated Brendan Fraser, what could be a better allegory of Jack Russell parenting than the premise of welcoming a once cryogenically frozen caveman into the modern world? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. More than a dog, almost a person, so much to love. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So number five. A sister and a brother become trapped in their favorite old-timey TV show and slowly bring color, life, and trouble to the drab black and white world. Okay, that was called pleasant something. Pleasantness, pleasantry. Hey, what was that? (laughs) You guessed wrong. I wasn't done guessing. (laughs) Okay, well, what's your final answer? Final answer, Pleasant Town. You got to go play the Mario (laughs) Death song. Come on. The game's not even over. It's not over. You still have two lives, but you're not doing so hot. It's not Pleasant Town? No, it's Pleasantville. Why do you get the ding? I got it right. (laughs) But let's get back to the game. How is Pleasantville inspired by Jack Russell's? As with most Jack Russell parents, our life was pretty drab until we welcomed this colorful, troublesome creature to flip turn it upside down. (laughs) <laughs> so true. Our lives are certainly more colorful and eventful now. Absolutely. You ready for number four? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. In one of the saddest movies of the 90s, if not one of the saddest movies of all times, a young girl obsessed with the macabre learns the true meaning of death when her best friend walks into a beehive and fails to run away. Wait, Macaulay Culkin didn't choose to stay and not run away. He couldn't get away in time. How dare you? I'm sorry. It always seemed that way to be the way it was edited. He just (laughs) walked into it and stayed. (laughs) Run away, man. (laughs) Plus, he was severely allergic. So so possibly one bee sting could have done the same thing to him. So you sound like you know what the movie is. Of course. It's my girl. And yes, I would have to concur that it's probably one of the saddest movies of all time. I mean, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And this movie was clearly inspired by Jack Russell's because, same with the heroine, she doesn't think she can be friends with Macaulay Culkin (laughs) or doesn't quite understand the value of their relationship. And as we learned last week in Rainbow Bridge episode, sometimes we don't realize how special our connection to our dogs are until they leave us. Too true. And too soon. So let's take a moment, take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with the top three 90s movies inspired by Jack Russell Terriers, The Metal Round. So wait. Aloha Mama Apparel wants to spread the spirit of aloha. Genesis Belote, the creator of Aloha Mama Apparel, was born on the mainland and resides in Southern California. But she cherishes her Hawaiian culture and honors the half of her family that lives on the island. She loves being a mama and a designer. At Aloha Mama, they know being a mama is hard work, but it's the best work. That's why they style mamas and kiddos in apparel that is bright and filled with beachy vibes. For the cutest casual attire celebrating the spirit of Aloha, go to shopalohamama.com. That's shop, A-L-O-H-A-M-A-M-A.com. Shopalohamama.com. Welcome back, puppy parents. We're entering the final phase of our game. We're in the top three of the top nine 90s movies inspired by Jack Russell Terriers. Great fun so far. Absolutely. And I've actually seen pretty much all of these movies. Probably because they've been out for like 30 years at this point. Oh my God. How dare you point that out? (laughs) Anyway, we're in the top three and I believe it's my turn to read the summary. Okay. You guess the title and say how it's related to JRT. So here's number three. 
An estranged couple and their equally crazy team of storm chasers pursue increasingly violent tornadoes around the American Midwest. Ah, yes. I definitely feel like I'm in the movie Twister whenever Carson gets the zoomies. Yes. Look out, folks. When Carson starts spinning uncontrollably, destruction is near. We should start using that F-level system when one of us is on the way home, just to give each other a heads up. (laughs) Yeah, we can say, what can we say? Clear skies ahead. Or there's an F-4-level zoomy happening in the living room headed towards the master suite. (laughs) Yeah, let's do that. I like that. (laughs) All right. You ready for number two? Yes. A mean hermit author reluctantly foster fathers a neighbor's painfully adorable dog and learns the true meaning of life and love. (coughs) Sounds a lot like someone I know. (coughs) Yeah, sure. (laughs) Come on. You're taking a long time to answer. You're about to get the Dead Mario song. (laughs) Well, don't you dare give me that. (laughs) I've still got three lives. The movie is as good as it gets. And it's inspired by Jack Russell's, well, all dogs, really, because nothing soothes and improves a savage beast like the love of a dog. Testify. So Carson has changed you for the better, I think. Yeah. And it's like that line from the movie. He's all, you make me want to be a better man. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That's a really good impression. (laughs) Yes. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Drum roll, please. Set in 1962, a group of baseball-obsessed young boys must do battle with a mythically enormous and ferocious dog after they accidentally hit a baseball signed by Babe Ruth into the beast yard. All right. I love this one. And uh, we did battle with a fantastically ferocious beast for years at home, at the Sandlot. He chased us from one end of the town to the other at some point, I'm sure. (laughs) Yes, that's true. I mean, he's a feisty little guy, ferocious when he was little and learning. And wow. Yeah. So the legend of Carson has spread far and wide, striking fear into the hearts of fence hoppers for generations. (laughs) I'm sure it has. (laughs) And if only we had a piece of priceless sports memorabilia to show for it. Well, I think Carson is the priceless memorabilia. Okay. (laughs) We also did one of those super fun survey memes on our Facebook page where people use different emojis to cast their vote. Those are fun. The meme included Sandlot, Twister, As Good As It Gets, 10 Things I Hate About You, Pleasantville, and My Girl. And Facebook's number one answer, all of Facebook, (laughs) (laughs) felt that Sandlot was the number one. Same as ours. Exactly. We chose wisely. We did choose wisely. So that was some super ridiculous talk about JRTs and 90s movies. And we hope you had some fun with us. It's time for Instadog of the Week. I love this bit. It is so much fun finding new adorable pups on the gram. And this week is a doozy of a cutie. May we present Stinky Tinky the Frenchie. Yay! Uh, uh, yay! You can find Tinkerbell the Frenchie at Stinky underscore Tinky underscore the underscore Frenchie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump right in and let's take a look at Tinkerbell's bio. First of all, there's a lot of emojis. So this mama <laughs> and her and Tinkerbell are happy people, right? They've got <laughs> flowers and, and a lot of fun stuff. She is, of course, a Frenchie, a French bulldog. She was born August 4th, 2017. She also goes by Tinky and Tink. She hails from Hobart, Tasmania. Ooh. And then they have at the bottom, it says forever home, and it has all the emojis. It has a mom. It has looks like three kiddos, 
and a cat. Big family. <laughs> and she looks adorable, of course. And she looks like she's well taken care of. So maybe the stinky is a, she has a little bit of stink in her attitude. That's lo- why I call Carson stinky. <laughs> so that's probably. <laughs> Just some mischievousness going on behind these <laughs> big old eyes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love looking at this page because... The overall look is a lot of soft, subdued colors, but then you get these bright pops, whether it's a bed or a toy that's in the picture. Mm -hmm. So it's just really pretty to look at. And she is a white Frenchie with black markings. And she's almost has the same kind of markings as a JRT. Absolutely. Right? The sides of her face, her ears are black, and then a couple of spots on her body. (laughs) It's really (laughs) cute. (laughs) So apparently she has three human siblings. However, there's one little boy that pops up the most in these pictures. He seems to just love her. And one of my favorite pictures is him sitting on the floor with her and he's feeding her string cheese. Oh, (laughs) she's right up in there. The caption says he loves her so much he will share his string cheese. Oh. And yes, before you ask, he did share one bite, Lady in the Tramp style. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And mom says, and no, I did not approve. (laughs) That's great. There's a story behind that image. I love that. Yeah, we get a little insight as to what's actually happening. And another picture that I like is actually a meme, and it doesn't have Tinky in it, but I like that she includes things like this because I think we all can relate (laughs) to these things. Absolutely. So this particular meme has two jars. One is a swear jar, and it has just a few coins in the bottom. And then the other jar is full to the top with gold coins <laughs> and it's labeled telling people about my dog when I wasn't asked jar. <laughs> That's us. Our jar overflowed so hard that we had to start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Our friends don't want to listen anymore. It's your turn, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. My absolute favorite image is is up towards the top. It was the one that they posted just after she got 6,000 followers on Instagram. Congrats. Awesome. And apparently that took a lot out of her because she's passed out with her tongue sticking out. (laughs) (laughs) It took a lot to get to 6,000. I really relate to that image. That's how I feel every Friday night, pretty much every night after five. After work, I know. (laughs) I will say to you that I envy pictures of dogs sleeping because I feel like they really just pass out and forget about the world. (laughs) (laughs) Got to figure out how to do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is Stinky Tinky the Frenchie, and she is adorable. You've got to go check her out. Again, that's Stinky, S-T-I-N-K-Y, underscore, Tinky, T-I-N-K-Y, underscore, the, underscore, Frenchie. You're going to love seeing that cute little face every day in your feed. And a big fat shout out to Sean Jansen for his all that in a bag of chips version of Semi-Charmed Life, one of the best songs of the 90s. You can find more of Sean's dope music, including his beautiful debut single, Silhouette, on his website, seanjansen.com. That's S-H-A-U-N-J-A-N-S-E-N.com. He's also on YouTube at Sean Jansen and on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Sean, the number three, Jansen. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn from the content? Or did you just have a good, relatable laugh? Well, now what? It's time to subscribe, follow, keep listening, and give a positive review on the Apple Podcast app. Then share the podcast with other puppy parents. This will allow us to connect you and your friends with fun dog loving content week after week. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell parents. Say bye, Carson. We'd love to connect with you online at jackrussellparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier podcast. The Jack Russell Parents podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrussellparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.